welcome people Mike C Town dead in hip hop here with another solo review and today I'm going to be talking about the album Zenith by the group Grayskull for those of you not in the know Grayskull is a hip hop group from Seattle Washington um, yes Seattle does have other rappers besides Macklemore even though that's just crazy to think about Grayskull is one of my favorite hip hop duos in indie hip hop, um, mainly because you have two incredibly dope MCs, Henri Osborne and JFK, aka Ninja Face, but they have such contrasting styles and flows that it makes their music just sound really unique. Henri has that more doomy, um, slower, uh, more unorthodox flow. Then you have JFK, who has the more high energy. Um, spinnerific type of flow and who, who, he kind of reminds me of Joel Ortiz which I didn't really notice until this album which is not a bad thing of course but yeah both MCs are just professionals when it comes to you know spitting on a mic you know 2007's Bloody Radio was easily one of my favorite albums to drop that year um, and then 2009, we saw Greymaker, which was their um, collaborative project with Maker, who a lot of you guys mostly known from doing um, work with Quell. Um, but anyway, that album was great. But, you know, while it was a great project, it kind of lacked the dark edge that I'd come to, you know, expect from Grayskull with albums like Dead Livers and Bloody Radio and any of their various mixtapes like uh, Face Feeder or Creature. After Greymaker dropped, I kind of thought they broke up. You know, I didn't really hear any noise from these guys together. You know, uh, JFK had dropped a solo mixtape in, I think it was 2010. Um, and then Henri was off doing Dark Time Sunshine. Then I heard that Zenith was dropping and I got super stoked. I had really high expectations for this album and I'm glad that they lived up to those expectations. Um, the album starts off incredible. You have um, Raekwon the Chef giving them a great intro for the album. Then the track picks up pretty much for me where Bloody Radio left off. You know, you had that high energy but almost dark beat, and then the MCs were just going in. From there, it moved on to the track, Come On. And I gotta say, right at that moment, I knew that this album was gonna be a keeper. That track is crazy. The beat is crazy, and the MCs are just rapping their asses off. You know what I'm saying? What's really cool about Grayskull, and this is probably um, indicative of any duo, was you have certain tracks where, of course, you know, you have a lot of tracks where they're level as far as um, their performance, but then you have some tracks where one MC might outperform the other other MC. And I feel like on this track, I think JFK brought it. JFK sounded like he had something to prove on this track. From there, it stays pretty steady as far as um, having a large number of dope songs. Um, I there weren't too many skippable tracks. Um, you know, what's really noticeable about Grayskull is their versatility. You know what I mean? Like, not a lot of their songs sound the same, but they're still cohesive. You know, the production throughout this album, in my opinion, is top notch. There's some great beats on here. Um, not a lot of the beats are, are too similar. Uh, some high energy, some kind of laid back, some experimental and choppy. They did a great job with grabbing beats, you know, and, 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 and using those beats to make a really interesting listen for this album. Then you have them covering a lot of different topics and a lot of different areas, you know, some socially relevant areas, some more dealing with the person. What's also really noticeable about Grayskull is the way they do their hooks. You know, they have a really special way of doing their hooks, of laying them out. You know, um, it's weird to say about a rapper, but it's something that I've always noticed. The way the hooks are laid out, it's a way that sounds all their own. 
like the track The Gift with um, Reba DeVito or or a track like um, I Adapt. You know, if, if another group had done tracks with those type of hooks, I would think to myself, that sounds like something that Grayskull would do. Some of my standout tracks from this album, um, Come On, which I already talked about, had that high energy and the crazy ass spitting. Um, Apollo 11, which Pete, the beat was just insane, man. Super choppy, um, experimental. I love the way, I love the way they wrote it. Uh, pro homo. Um, like I was saying about JFK with him shining on uh, Come On, I think on this track, Henri stole the show. Henri's verse was super, super dope to me. Another song would be Facing the Fang. Great beat. The dudes laid down some serious verses. That was the first song I heard from this album. Um, and it got me super psyched to hear the rest of it. I, and again, I love Henri's verse on this track. I just love the way he rhymes so off kilter as the gators face each other with mouth open they vampires like gary oldman another track i loved was bad business um great beat uh definite head knocker and shout out to experience for that verse boy now this is a track where experience stole the show like his verse was nasty to me of course i can't not talk about uh, not going anywhere with my man Aesop Rock, uh, who always, always comes with it. I'm pretty sure he produced this track, and his verse was just, as usual, Aesop Rock, man. You know what I'm saying? Awkward spreaders of the spider silk crosshairs. Christ, cross get promoted with the lost ears. Aesop is that dude, man. And he always fits in so well with these guys. Um, same thing with the track he did with them on, on Bloody Radio. They have a really good chemistry. And another really dope track was the bonus track, Adios. Super dark, super sick beat. And as usual, these guys just wrote it perfectly. Follow those hoofs into the snow or the footprints in the sand. Um, this, this comes across to me as uh, one of their more religious tracks. They did something similar with the hidden track on uh, Bloody Radio. I'm not even sure if that track actually had a name, but it was another more religious track. I talked about Grayskull before in our conversation about uh, Christian hip hop. Um, these guys do not come across to me as a Christian hip hop group. They make songs, they're a rap group, they happen to be Christian. They rely on their abilities as rappers and their abilities to write great songs rather than you know falling back on their faith to to push their music or or to push some sort of agenda uh, a couple songs i wasn't super into was um we vanish um beat didn't move me great idea but the execution wasn't all there it's a pretty typical uh rap rock beat um the verses were still dope but the backdrop just didn't really uh didn't really work for me Wide Awake, yeah, I didn't like the beat and I didn't really care for the hook for this song. Um, the verses were okay, but you know, as a whole, um, it just didn't work for me. Some some parts of it just came off to be a little bit corny. The verdict is still out on the track Clubs. I don't know if I like this track or not. Um, I don't like it when I'm listening to it, but then it's stuck in my head the second the song is off. That fucking hook, man. I look good in here. I want to stay in here. Fuck around and have a baby in here. Man, I, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know if I like this. But the theme of the song was dope. You know, women and clubs and and sometimes the, 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 the air of the club being very detrimental to a woman's um, well-being. Um, not something that's covered in a very intelligent way, but Grace Gold does it very, very, very well. I just didn't really like the overall sound of the track. Overall, I think this is a dope album. You know, it's a bit lengthy, but not too lengthy as to pose some type of issue. Um, there wasn't a lot of filler, so the tracks moved along very well. Um, 
I feel like they put a bit more into this than they did Bloody Radio. You know, as much as I love Bloody Radio, this one just, to me, I don't know, it had a more complete sound to it. It had a more cohesive and uh, comprehensive sound. Uh, but yeah, that's really it. I think Grayskull, you know, they they took some time away from each other and they came back and they gave us an album that was worth the wait. You know, so when you get a chance, go pick this up. Uh, shout out to Henri, shout out to JFK, shout out to Figure Four Records, and that's it. So um, yeah, so go check it out and let me know what you guys think in the motherfucking comment section. Alright, so you know how we do in these motherfucking streets. Peace, bitches.